All right, I think our numbers have slowed down a bit. Um, I appreciate you all. I've been watching the chat. We've got representation from lots of counties, hopefully most of them that will be attending. Um, so before we get started, I am just letting you know I'm recording this meeting. So if someone that you know in your county would like to watch it, um, it will be recorded and made available hopefully by tomorrow. Um, I also hope that all of you who are able to um, watch and ask questions and be a part of this presentation tonight can share it with those who were not able to be from your county so that we can help make this, this horse show a little bit um, easier and manageable for all of those people, especially new persons coming from your counties. So I appreciate again, you entering the chat box. We're gonna go ahead and get started. Um, tonight's presentation is a little bit, the first half of it is kind of information and reminders and updates that everyone will need to know. And then we'll get into more um, beginner information for people who have not been to State Horse Show before, um, some common terminology, things you'll need to know, hopefully answer some of those questions, but we will open it up for your questions too. And please, um, no question is a dumb question. The State Horse Show is a really big event and, and sometimes it's hard to remember or hard to answer all the questions of what you might need to know. So please ask those questions because if you have that question, chances are someone else out there will also have that question so we can answer two for one. And the more information we can answer for you and get out there, the, the easier and less stressful your trip to State Horse Show will be um, that you'll be prepared for. So feel free to drop things into the chat. Um, I'm gonna ask Amy to help me facilitate. Amy's my support staff, Amy DeGroot. You've probably seen her name on things um, as well um, that have come out, help her help me monitor and watch the chat as we go through this. We'll stop kind of in between each section and answer questions as we go. So first some important updates um, for the 2021 State Horror Show. First of all, I'm so happy that we are back. Um, things are not gonna be exactly like they've been in the past, but you know what, they're darn close. And we're just happy to have a horse show this year and have all these kids be able to um, show off their accomplishments and be able to show their skills um, and mastery of the horse project off again. So we're happy to be back. So I'm glad all of you are on here and that we have kids coming um, and that State Horse Show will be a really fun opportunity for those kids to learn, to build friendships and to show off what they've worked on this past year. The purpose of tonight's webinar is really to provide um, a brief background of the State Horse Show, just so people who have not been there um, can understand a little bit about how big of an undertaking that this show is and how large it is and how it runs. Um, update participants on changes for this year that might or may or may not affect them in different ways. Clarify areas that cause confusion or are not understood by those some of the do's and don'ts um, as we do that, and then a brief orientation and frequently asked questions for new families as a part of tonight. So as we move into it, um, I just, the, the brief update and background, the State 4-H Horse Show is run almost solely by volunteers. There are only two pay, paid staff people and the rest are key volunteers and parent volunteers. This is a huge event. Um, I, I didn't have a chance to update the participation as you see in there. So this was from a few years ago, um, but I will tell you because I do know the an answer now. We have 591 youth participants in this year's show and we have 547 horses coming. So we're down slightly, but really not a lot. So that's exciting that we that were able to maintain our numbers and we have a lot of participants coming to the state horse show. Um, the budget for the show and actually I didn't update that in 2019, but the numbers are correct. Um, I did go in and find those. The expenses for us to run the State 4-H Horse Show is 123,035. This was what was budgeted for. Um, our projected income is $132,676.75 for a projected income of $9,641.75. Now I will tell you that projected income we already know will not be that high. Um, some of our expenses have come in higher than we budgeted, um, and, and the majority of that reasoning has been from increases in products, goods, or services, um, maybe due to COVID, maybe due to other things, but some of our things that we've budgeted for for a number of years, and we budgeted, and we even increased our budget, some have come in um, significantly higher this year that we've had to do. So we did have that padding in there. We will probably come out closer to not having 
that projected income or not as much of a projected income. But it's really just to give you an idea of how large um, and scope of what this event costs us to run and how many participants are actually there. Because sometimes we get caught up in, oh yeah, I know we've got six, seven, eight, nine from our county going, but in the scope of things, this is a large event that takes place. So as we get into it, we're gonna talk about changes for the 2021 year. This year, unfortunately, we are not able to have our mixer, which has generally had a DJ and kind of a dance um, opportunity. We are not able to do that for COVID reasons. They just don't want us to um, encourage uh, interactions that are that close together. So it's disappointing, I know, um, but we will maybe be able to um, find up some other ways to have those kids um, engage in some opportunities and, and, and have some opportunities to build friendships. But the mixer or dance as it's been in the past will not happen this year, same as it didn't happen in State Fair this year as well. Grand entry, we think, is going to look a little bit different. Um, as we move into the State Horse Show, we're still negotiating and figuring some things out. We think that that's going to look different. Um, we don't have that exactly figured out yet, but we will have more information on that from the university tomorrow. Um, so know that the grand entry as it's been in the past may look different this year. I just wanna let you know that if you are a grand entry rider or participant, if it changes from that, we will make sure we let you know how and what to expect to be a part of that opportunity. There will still be some kind of grand entry. It's just going to look different. Masks for COVID at this time, and I'm not saying that this is going to be at State Fair, but right now masks are strongly recommended, but are not required. Um, we still have a week and a half out. I'm going to be honest, I don't foresee it changing, but I'm not going to guarantee that it won't. But if something should change, um, it'll be direction from the Minnesota Department of Health and the governor's office. If those things should change, we will let you know that as soon as we have that information. But right now, Masks are strongly recommended, but not required. Um, we do ask that you still try and maintain that safe distance and that safe space because we really want to mitigate any spread of COVID um, that might happen. So we are encouraging people to, to maintain a safe distance. Um, it doesn't mean it has to be six feet, but that safe distance and um, respect others, comfort and distance that they might have and respect others who choose to wear the mask and some will choose and some will not choose and it's okay either way. We just need to try and mitigate um, the spread of COVID by ensuring that we maintain a safe distance um, and operate in, in those safety protocols that way. And we do encourage hand washing and hand sanitizer if at all possible, continue to wash hands and keep those things clean. Counties. Um, for those of you who have been there before, we always let counties know who are gonna be in the cattle barn. Um, so if you appear on this list, and this list is longer than what you see right now, these are the counties whose stalls will be in the cattle barn this year. Aiken, Beltrami, Fillmore, Isanti, Martin, Mille Lacs, Nicolette, Pine, Wright, East Ottertail, Scott, Becker, Clay, Houston, Todd, Wadena, Traverse, and Wright. So if you see your county up here, your stalls are going to be in the cattle barn. Um, and the reason that we tell you that is all that other counties, if you don't see up there. From the Board of Health today, I think there's another one that's positive. Um, if you don't see your county up here, you will be in the horse barn. Um, and the reason we tell you that is for your counties and your decorations, some of that makes a difference if you're in the cattle barn versus the horse barn. The horse barn, the majority of the stalls have pads in them. Um, the cattle barn does not. So please prepare for that. So your horse is going to be standing on concrete. So prepare for to have enough shavings that you can provide adequate um, cushion for your horse um, in the cattle barn. Herdsmanship. Herdsmanship, the system for 2021. Um, the requirements for herdsmanship have eased slightly. Um, I won't say they're going away. We still want all counties to participate and take herdsmanship um, seriously. We want you to take care of your animal. 
We want you to respect others in the process of that. We want to have a good presentation to the public so that public can be other counties, that public can be grandma and grandpa, um, all of those people who might wander through the barns to see your animals. We want to make sure that we're presenting that um, in, a, in an adequate and fair and, and way that really represents the positive nature of 4-H and how they take care of their animals. And the last thing about herdsmanship we really talk about is the safety aspect. So not only safety of kids, but safety of their animals as well. So when you go in there, there's a score sheet, you know, it talks about not having hay nets down where, where animals can get caught in them, um, safety of not having a step stool or something left in um, on your horse inside your stall, the same with having your horses tacked up in the stall, all of those things are kind of simple safety things that we can think about when we think about herdsmanship. So a couple of years ago, herdsmanship got pretty competitive. Um, to the fact where we had kids on hands and knees with toothbrushes cleaning out shavings in those. We, we really want kids to be able to enjoy the show, be able to spend time cheering on their counterparts in the Coliseum or in, in Compia Arena. So we kind of have taken away all of the requirements and eased it up a little bit, but still want to make sure that we take care of those. So the scorecard has care of animals. We want to make sure that the horses have had water. So we used to say that if the water bucket is less than half full and some people would just measure it, if it's less than half full, you would get points deducted. We don't want it to be that nitpicky. What we want is to make sure that you've taken care of your animals. So the water bucket shouldn't be totally bone dry and not have been bone dry, that you should be watering your horse adequately as needed. The water bucket should securely be fastened chest high so that it's not a safety issue. There should be appropriate bedding in the stall and the stall should be cleaned at least twice a day. <clears throat> there was a time that if the judges went by and there was fresh poop in the stall, um, they'd have points deducted. We aren't that picky, but we do want you to be cleaning out your horse stall. So at least twice a day, you need to make a strong effort to have that horse stall cleaned out. But we do want you to also be in the Coliseum cheering on your people. Um, presentation area to the public. It should be swept down. You know, light watering is allowed, but don't leave puddles. Arrangement of furniture and decorations should be neat and attractive. No equipment, feed, or tack should be in the aisle. That's what your tax stalls are for. Um, so just a good presentation of the area to the public. Safety. All tack, whoops, all, all tack grooming equipment, forks, and shovels should be arranged neatly. Electrical outlets used for grooming equipment, approved fans and phones as necessary. So phone chargers, you can have fans and phones if they're needed. Um, Tack removed when unattended in the stall. So if a horse is in that stall and you're not with it, it should not have tack on. A work halter may be attached uh, to the outside of the stall door when the horse is in the stall in order to move horses quickly in case of an emergency, but no, other things shouldn't be hanging or on your stalls for safety purposes. Safety continued, animal attendance while tied or standing in the aisle should never leave that horse alone while it's tied or standing in the aisle. An animal should be properly tied in tie stalls only. Um, only necessary items should be in the stalls, such as food, water, et cetera. So don't leave your step stools or all, any other equipment in those stalls. Respect for others. You should be doing your own work or operating in teamwork within your county. You should be friendly, polite, and courteous to your neighbors, to the public, and to your own um, participants within your county. Clean up after one's horse and wash the stall and in the wash stall or in passing. So if you're leading your horse out and it poops on the way out, you should or have somebody else clean that up as same as in the wash stalls. And others, once a stall has been checked out, no other horse or tech should be put into that stall without a stall card to identify the responsible party or county. So you need to be identified so that the herdsman people can identify what county you are and who you are if there's an issue, concern or problem and also for judging. Um, stalls should either be assigned, are stalls either by their assigned number or by county decoration must be clearly identified as a specific county. So one way or another, each county needs to be um, able to be identified for multiple reasons. So for herdsmanship, if there's an issue with a horse, if there's an issue with a person, we need to know where to go um, to clear up that matter. So again, herdsmanship is we don't want it to be so sticky and so not fun that we don't want to do it, but it is important to make sure that we keep those stalls clean, that we present well to the public and we maintain safety and we have respect for others. 
So the new herdsmanship, the rewards, there's an expect, the expectation is that more counties will be successful in this new model because it's not so strict. Um, each county, so instead of getting points, they will get check marks in each of the areas for judging. If they get it, so for example, on Friday mornings, herdsmanship judging, if they get all their check marks, their county will go into a drawing with their name added for that specific judging time. If you don't get all your check marks, your name doesn't go in for that drawing, but each day and each judging opportunity is a new day to earn it. So if you don't get all your check marks on a day, keep up your herdsmanship because the next judging opportunity, you might get all your check marks and be right back in there. So each county gets their name in a drawing if they receive all their check marks for each judging section. And on Sunday afternoon, we award state horse show trips through a drawing of all of those counties who have earned check marks for those days. So no parts again, check marks only. It's easier to get all your check marks now. Counties who have all checks go into the drawing. Um, these entries are for each judging time. Sunday afternoon, all counties are asked to be in the Coliseum um, in their seats and we'll do the drawing for herdsmanship winners. And we expect that if your county's drawn, we'll hear from you in a positive yelling and screaming because you just earned an extra trip to the state horse show for the next year. So herdsmanship will be um, easier, but also provide an opportunity for you to partner up, team up, still provide the necessary things, but have the opportunity to also watch and cheer on your fellow teammates in their opportunities to ride. So what you win, more counties are eligible and that's extra state horse show trip for the next year. Questions on anything that we've talked about so far? Any questions? Okay, hearing none, we'll keep moving. If you have them later, please feel free to ask. 15 state trips will be drawn for those herdsmanship um, awards. So we hope it makes it a little less stressful and fun for all of you. A few other changes, which was in effect last time, but it feels like a new year. Um, no bicycles are allowed at the state 4-H horse show, so you'll have to hoof it. Um, golf carts and side-by-sides are allowed, four-wheelers are not, but they can be driven only by licensed drivers and only the legal amount of people on it. And they really should only be used necessarily to move equipment, to move hay, and those kind of things, not not just to run around on. Um, they should be for um, working purposes if you have them there. And I know there are a few families who have um, family members who don't um, get around as well and they can use those side-by-sides to uh, move around as well. But they also need to remember they need to be parked similarly to cars so they can't just be left out on the roads on the areas where there's no parking. Renee? Yes. Um, someone's asking about scooters and skateboards. No scooters, the state fair doesn't allow scooters, skateboards, or rollerblades on the property. So great question. Um, volunteer shifts. Each family is expected to sign up for a volunteer shift. Um, so if you have two participants, we expect family to sign up for two, and we do track these by county. So we do expect that every participant has somebody that's willing to sign up for one of those shifts. Um, and please, please, please attend the shift that you signed up for. We can't have this show. It can't happen without this help. Um, we do count on you. Right now, currently, we were earlier today about 200 volunteer spots short. So if you can please do more than one, or if you haven't signed up yet, please do. Um, Amy can put in the chat what that volunteer spot link is. It gives a lot of them, some of them give description on what the volunteer position is. Some of them are for adults only. Um, and I know someone has been asking the question about when can I volunteer? When should I volunteer? Um, if you wanna work around, do your best to work around when your kid is not being judged. If for some reason you sign up for a slot and it happens to be while one of your kids, we don't expect you not to watch your kids participate and ride. So you can switch with someone else or in a worst case scenario, let us know that you're gonna be late, that you need to watch. Let the person know that's in charge of that area 
that you'll be late, that you need to watch your child, it happened to coincide. Um, but do your best to, to work around those schedules. If you look in there, you'll know that if you have a seventh grader who's running polls, uh, we start with grade 13. So if you sign up earlier in the morning, chances are you'll avoid being on top of your own kids um, time slot to run. So you can kind of work around it that way or do your best, but we really, really, really need you to sign up for those volunteer spots. Questions on the volunteer spots? Renee, um, is there a certain place where volunteers are supposed to go to like pick up information? I did a sign up for herdsmanship. Um, is there a specific office or person or where are we supposed to go to get the information to do that job? So herdsmanship, you would, would show up um, a little bit before your shift is scheduled to start at the horse barn office. So herdsmanship always goes out of the horse barn office. If you don't know where to check in, um, if you check in at the at the 4-H office, um, like for example, tabulation, if you go to where tabulations are done in the Coliseum, or if you signed up for tabulations in Compere, go to where the computers are, which is generally above the tunnel in the Coliseum or inside the first doors. If you check in to the main spot of where that is, or if you know what your job is, you don't have to check in, but if you don't, stop in at the show office, which is, um, the northwest corner of the Coliseum and you enter from the outside, which is where our main horse show office is. Um, check in there if you don't know where to go or who to check in with, but that's a great question. I just had a quick question about the, the aisle cleanups. I signed up for that and it says nine, but it doesn't say like nine to 10, nine to 11. Is that an ongoing thing that goes all morning or how does that work? Um, generally, we just ask that it, it gets swept out once and then you check back for a couple hours and if it needs it again, check, then sweep it. So it's not something you have to stand on duty for necessarily. The job just needs to get done for that one. That's why it kind of doesn't have an ending time. Okay, thanks. These are all great questions. If you have more questions on any of the volunteer jobs responsibilities or if you're unsure what something is or unsure if it's for you, um, you can reach out to uh, myself or Mark Storm, who's also on here. He's one of the show chairs and Randy Dawkin is also a show chair and they can help kind of tell you what that job might entail and if it's for you before you sign up. Amy, what about for the parking lot attendants? Um, where do we go for that? Parking lot attendants, you would reach out. My husband is actually the, the person who's in charge of parking lot. And what we're probably gonna do is because that one's a little harder to do training on the fly. What we're probably gonna do is reach out on Tuesday right before state horse show and have a quick 15 minute kind of training through Zoom for all of those who have signed up for parking lot attendant. So he can kind of give you a heads up on what that job will entail and what you'll need to know. He will be around to help you and we'll give his phone number and um, okay. as well that day so that he can help you, but it's almost, what we've found over the past two years when we started doing those, it's, an, it's a very needed position, but it's really hard to do that training on the fly for that. But training really is like 15 minutes about what you need to know. So we're gonna try and do like a quick Zoom meeting that we'll record um, as well. So if you can't be on it, don't worry, but we'll record it that way. He can tell you what you need to know prior to doing that. But you can check in with him. He'll be on a golf cart almost all the whole time out there in um, in the parking lot areas. And if you don't find him right away, you'll have his phone number, you can give him a call. Okay. Yep. Renee, can I interrupt you? Sure. Um, there's some people asking here on how was it decided on who got stalled in the horse barn versus um, a cattle barn? Do you know? Um, no, it, it's, Oftentimes it is, so I'm just gonna be upfront and honest, it is a puzzle to put counties into the slots and make them work so that they can be together. Um, there is no necessarily no formula for that. Um, it's just, it's a puzzle. That's, a, that's about the best way I can answer that. Yeah, Renee, I can, I can add to that a little bit. I know that um, some counties request the cattle barn versus the horse barn so that occurs and, and then just to add to what Renee said it, it's very much a jigsaw puzzle for 
Tim Haroldson to um, get everybody together, get the counties together, all the different sizes of the counties and how many uh, you know stalls are in each row. So there, there really isn't. It's, it's the best that he can do as each county signs up. And with the numbers change from year to year in counties, so then it flexes about where those openings fit best um, and those kind of things. Um, and there's really, and there's nothing necessarily bad about the cattle barn other than that it doesn't have the mats, but you can adequately pad that with shavings. Um, my yeah. kids show when we've been in the cattle barn a number of years, never had an issue. In fact, some request it because if it's a rainy no, day, get out of there. Have, Come on. if it's a rainy day, you don't ever have to leave. Um, out of the cover because you can come straight from the cattle barn underneath the tunnel in. Um, it also has higher ceilings, so sometimes it stays a little cooler and you have better airflow. Uh, on the flip side, you know the horse barn has some padded stalls, so there there are goods and bads on both cattle barn and horse barn. So I wouldn't say that one is worse or a punishment over the other one. It's just a puzzle in how those pieces fit together. Other questions? Sorry, someone's asking, are the stalls sanitized? Yes, they are sanitized after state fair now. They will all be cleaned and sprayed and sanitized. And as we leave, they are all sprayed and sanitized again. That's why we can't get into the horse barn till a specific time um, to bring our horses in and to bring our people in because it takes that long for them to clean between and sanitize in between. And the same they're, thing happens after us before champ show. Right, they're, they're typically, uh, the crew is in there on that Thursday morning, even sanitizing and spraying the stalls in both barns. Yeah, so that definitely does happen. It has to happen and it, and it will happen. Okay, another question. What are approved fans? They really should have, um, to be honest, they should have or be plugged into an extension cord that has a ground. Um, is what we really consider an approved fan. And that it's safe and, and secure that a horse isn't gonna get into it or a person's not gonna get into it. So no open fans um, that don't have coverings on them, that kind of thing. It's not that we go and check them, but we really want the safety aspect to be there because if the fire marshal comes through and sees something that he doesn't like, then out it goes. Okay, trail class, can you walk the trail before the event? Yes, we have a 10 minute walk through before each block. So the trail takes place in, I believe it's two hour blocks. Uh, that may be not 100% accurate. So where the grade will go for a couple of grades will go for a couple hour period. And we do at the very beginning of that time offer a 10 minute walk through. So you'll have ample opportunity to do that. We ask that you walk through um, the one before your class only. And also in that, I might as well add for trail class, all the pattern classes. So that includes all the game classes, trail class, showmanship, horsemanship, and equitation. We run in number order. Um, and we start with, uh, what is it, Renee, halfway or a third of the, 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 no, not for those, that's number only, never mind. Um, so it's, it's number, number only. only. Yeah, number order. If you miss your turn, you miss your turn. Um, the only exception to that is if you have a conflict with showing in another event in one of the other buildings or arenas. And I can tell you that that only happens even though as an exhibitor and a parent, you might you know, think it's going to occur. That really only happens once or twice a year where we've got to hold or to alter or change something. And we will accommodate you for that. You will not miss um, a class because you have a conflict. You might miss a class because you didn't hear, you didn't, you're sleeping or you didn't show up, um, but you will not miss one of your classes due to a conflict with one of the other classes during the show that we just, that won't happen. But it's your responsibility to reach out to, if you're in the Coliseum, whoever's C correct. in the tunnel area. C correct, you go to the tunnel. If it's showmanship, you talk to the people down at the, that are administering showmanship. Um, otherwise, if it's in the Coliseum, in the tunnel area, talk to those people, talk to us. We will communicate with the other arenas all day long. Um, let's just say you're in seventh grade. If you're doing seventh grade, you know, polls and then and, and, and you're also in show, you know, what is it in the morning? It's showmanship and um, key race, I believe. It, it, they, they, 
overlap each other so that it just doesn't occur. Um, but that doesn't mean you don't want to be mindful and pay attention to it. We'll pay attention to it with you, uh, but you're not going to miss your class uh, because of that conflict. It just won't happen. So if you're, if you're late and you're out to lunch or something like that, you miss your class, you, you missed your class. Yep. Okay, another question. Um, can someone be timed out if their horse refuses to go in the arena? That's a great area. We try really hard not to let that happen. We do a pretty good job of helping you get in the arena. Uh, um, we're not gonna take 15 minutes to do that. Um, but I can't think of the last time we had one that we weren't able to get into the arena. It may take us a few minutes, um, but we'll get we'll get. We don't general. have the specific time limit like WSA Correct. has now. Cor Correct. Correct. We 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 will right. get you in there. We we want you to have every opportunity to show your horse. So. Um, somebody is asking if you ever considered mixing this up throughout the show. The same kid should not have to go first or last through the whole show. Um, well, fair point. Uh, um, going in numerical order, we do do that. Um, in you know, I guess the alternative is is in the future perhaps we could look at a different way, but that's the most orderly fashion for us to keep the show going and keep it on schedule. Any other question right now? Um, somebody asked a question about um, electrical permits. Renee, I know you were doing your lottery draw today. They want to know when they're going to find out. We, we are not quite done because there's a lot <laughs> to draw, but we are drawing right now. They will go out in the mail tomorrow. Um, and hopefully we can have a list posted on the 4-H horse website under the state, state horse show tab. So it will be a list of the electrical permits. But I also want you to know, so if you don't get drawn for an electrical or for some reason when you sent your things in, because it says in there, so I'm just going to qualify that. It says in there that if you don't have a stamped return envelope, you get put to the bottom of the list. We have, as we've been opening these, some of them have not had a stamp or not had an envelope. Um, if you make it into uh, the electrical drawing from that, we will call you and say, we're not mailing this out because for one, you didn't give us an envelope or you didn't give us a stamp or something along those lines. So then you need to find Joe when you get to the show and pick up your um, appropriate paperwork. Um, but, but the electrical list will know if you didn't make it on there, for some reason, if you weren't drawn in the lottery, you will receive a text message probably or a phone call from Joe saying what your options are. So if you have the opportunity, you might be able to go into the overflow lot, which is electrical, or if you don't have that's full, then he'll give you what your options might be. So you could switch to non-electrical or you could say, nope, I have other plans or whatever. So if you don't get electrical, you will get a call from Joe or a text message from Joe in the next few days. And we will be posting the electrical list by tomorrow up on the 4-H website. Um, somebody's asking if they're allowed to paint their horse like glitter on the butt. Yes, you can. Um, Renee, I know you talked about masks earlier. It says, are masks required anywhere? No, right now, strongly encouraged, not required anywhere. Um, somebody's asking about camping. If I request an overflow lot, will I be contacted if I'm in that area? If you got overflow electrical, you will receive um, an electrical permit that says overflow lot on it. But they won't be notified ahead of time? Um, yeah, they'll be on the electrical list. We'll have the overflow list posted as well. Because the overflow has electrical. Um, somebody's asking, are tie downs allowed? I don't know what that means. Yes, tie downs are allowed in games. In a game, in a game horse, yeah. Okay. I think that's it for now. We'll keep moving. Um, interviews will be done online and ahead of time at the State Horse Show. In the past, we have had a bank of computers where kids could sit down and take. It's like a 25-question, uh, multiple-choice question 
test, if you would. It's not really a test. It's just kind of questions and multiple choice answers. Um, we've had them do it at the show. This year, we have offered that to be done online ahead of the show. If you search NM4H horse, and then you click on 4-H state horse show button, on the right, there'll be a red square that's, that has state horse show interviews. If you click there, scroll down, find your age group. So it's whatever age group you're competing in at the state show. Click on that, that will take you right into the test and it doesn't take long and it will track you so we know who it was that has done the test. It doesn't take long to do it. We're encouraging all kids to do that. The top senior interview person and the top intermediate interview person will receive a really cool embroidered sweatshirt um, that has state horseshoe interview champion on it. Um, and you won't get those right at the show because you pick your size, your color and that kind of thing at the show and then they'll be sent to you. So I encourage all of you kids to do it. It's really educational. Nobody sees your scores. So whatever is done is done. Um, if you go in and take the test twice, um, only your first score will count. There is a time limit on there. And we ask that you do it honestly without looking things up on your phone and just sit down and do your best and go through the questions without additional help. Security, I know this has been a concern. Yep. A quick question on uh, interviews. Will there be callbacks? Nope. Um, so we just do it. If there are ties um, for the top placing, we have ahead of time picked out specific questions that are the tiebreaker questions. If it goes through all of those questions and it's still a tie, then it will be a draw from the hat and those winners will be announced at the state horse show. So we don't do in horse, we don't do callbacks like they do in livestock. At least not at this point. And the interviews will close at 4.30 on the Wednesday, the day before, um, what is it, the 15th of September at 4.30 is the last time that you can do those interviews. Security, I just want to touch on this. I know there's been concerns. I've heard it out there about the security of being in the cities and the Twin Cities and on the fairgrounds. Um, there is security on the grounds and we will have, de uh, have de dedicated police at our event. So I just want to reiterate that this, you know, some of the gates also will be locked to increase our security. So um, as we move in this further, we'd like to encourage all of you to come in through the Como Avenue entrance, um, gate number 14, the Canfield gate, because um, I can't guarantee that any of the other gates will be open at any time that you're coming in there because we are um, closing some of those off to just in ensure a little more of a secure, so we have one entrance versus more than one entrance to our show. Um, but we will have police officers present 24 seven at our show to ensure that that security, because we know there's been rumors that because the State Fair Police Department disbanded, which it did, but they have contracted with the Ramsey, Ramsey County Sheriff's Office to provide um, police officers to all events on the state fairgrounds 24 seven. So it will be a secure environment. We are not necessarily open to the public, although grandma, grandpa, those people can come. So it won't be the same opportunity. We are more of a closed group that will provide um, that safe and secure environment for the kids that are attending. Biosecurity. Um, I want you to please, just as a reminder, think about biosecurity with your horses. Don't share buckets, tack, or equipment. Um, reduce horse-to-horse -horse contact. This is good safety measures all the time with your horses. And we wanna reiterate when we have this many horses together, biosecurity is important um, for those animals as well as yourself with COVID still being around. So just be cautious and careful and think about biosecurity when you're moving horses and watering, feeding and all those kind of things. Um, COVID, if you're sick, please stay home. We know it's not gonna be, it's, 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 it's gonna be yucky if that happens to you and you have to make that call, but please do not come if you are sick. Um, if you get sick, please quarantine and let me know right away so that we can um, track that and be uh, proactive in what that means. Um, and please maintain distance as you can and masks again are strongly recommended, but not required. Hand sanitizer, wash your hands, all of those things so we can mitigate and keep COVID out of our event and keep all of our kids and families that are participating safe in our environment. 50th anniversary. So last year would have been the 50th anniversary by time wise 
um, for the state horse show, but because we didn't have it, this year is the 50th anniversary state 4-H horse show, which is really cool in itself. So we sell t-shirts there and the t-shirt guy has incorporated the 50th anniversary into the designs on the shirts. Um, so it'll be a little bit unique and more fun. There'll be a 50th anniversary display that will be open Friday through Sunday in the Coliseum concourse. We encourage you to go look at that. Um, there'll be a selfie booth that'll be open Friday through Sunday in the horse barn. It'll have a banner for 50th anniversary. Um, some cool things. You can maybe walk your horse up, get some pictures taken. Um, there's gonna be exhibitors trivia Friday, um, 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. and Saturday, eight to six. And the instructions and forms for each day are located in the horse barn office and Coliseum show office. Winners will be drawn and there'll be shirts handed out Sunday from 9 a.m. to 9.30 in front of the horse barn. If they're not picked up by 930, a new name will be drawn. So just another way to, to have a fun way to celebrate our 50th anniversary. Um, maybe get a cool t-shirt out of it that's unique for us, but another fun opportunity that we can do. There will also be an alumni reception and a reception for the 50th anniversary on Saturday from three to six in the Coliseum Concourse. So some additional things happening this year um, based on the 50th anniversary celebration. Renee, someone's asking if they can still order jackets. The jackets are a county thing. They're not ordered through us. If you're talking about like a state team jacket, that you would need to contact your county. So each count, not every county does that, but some counties, if your county has jackets, they would know where they get them from um, and how to connect you with that. Other questions? And again, um, just one other thing, and I didn't put it in here, but I just wanna reiterate, we kind of, so we rent the state fairgrounds for our event. When you're there, please be respectful. Um, don't be in your horse stall with Crocs on. Don't ride your horses outside of the area that we are in. So don't be riding them all over the fairgrounds, on the grasses, up by the big slide please maintain your presence and your horse's presence within the area of the horse barn, sheep barn, um, up to the miracle of birth, but in our section. So please don't go off wander out there because you will be stopped and questioned about that. Um, and whatever those consequences might be, we do ask that you respect the property of the state fairgrounds too, and stay within kind of the rental area that we have secured. Any other questions before we move into new family information? Can, um, right. is there a map layout, parking, camping, et cetera? Yep, so yes, um, one will come with your permit, electrical, but there's a map that I will show you a little bit here in a few minutes when it comes. We'll talk a little bit more specifics on camping and what to expect. But there is no there is no assigned camping spots. There is an assigned Correct. camping area. So she'll fill you in on all that. Yep. What about camping arrival? When do you want them to arrive? We generally don't. What we say is no earlier than eight. We know people start to roll in about six and sometimes it's because so nothing should come in before 6 a.m on Thursday morning. Um, and there's a couple of reasons for that. For one, one, we rent the grounds and if we have campers that come in on Wednesday night, we have to pay for the entire rental of that lot, um, which is upwards of five to $700 for one camper. Um, so no earlier than 6 a.m. on Thursday. I think it says 8 a.m. We prefer eight, but we understand too, some people have to get a camper in and still get to work. So six to eight is fine. But horses cannot get unloaded till 4 p.m. Kids can come in, the barn opens at noon, I believe, for them to start decorating stalls, but your horses cannot be unloaded before four o'clock. And that means you can't unload them and even tie them to your trailer. So please make the right accommodations because we can't have horses tied to trailers in the camping area or anywhere else. Renee, um, questions are coming in. Are trainers allowed to come with kids? Trainers can come with kids and work with the kids. They cannot be training the horse during that time. 
Is the outdoor arena open at all times or are classes being held in that arena too? The outdoor arena, there are no classes that are held there. Um, it's generally open for the most part. We don't want people really out there past 11, 12 in the morning because we don't have any supervision or those kind of things out there. But that um, warm up arena, the outside one is available pretty much at all times. We, we do close that arena for um, a few hours on Sunday afternoon for drill team horses only for them to warm up. So there is a period of time on Sunday when I think it's around noon or so that we will close the outdoor arena and that's just for drill team horses for about four or five hours there. That's on Saturday, also not Sunday. On Saturday, thank you. You're welcome. Other questions before we move into the next part? If not, um, those of you who have been there before, the, the second half is probably geared more towards new families. You're welcome to stay. Um, if you have questions that come up or you think about them later, please reach out, um, ask any of us um, that have been on here those questions and we will help to answer those for you. So we're gonna get more into new family information now and help them um, be able to hopefully be able to navigate their trip as well. Renee, one more thing. Um, open when are open ride times in the Coliseum? We have times on the schedule, but there are no. We're not allowed to have it open unless we have um, supervisors. Correct. correct. So we have. Oh, well, Mark, maybe you can address this better than I. Well, that that's correct. We there we do have to have. Uh, um, uh, I don't want to call it like a supervisor, but somebody to observe and just be there to be able to respond if there's an issue at any times uh, on a daily basis. It just really has to do with how late the show goes um, and what's going on. We make every effort to have it open as much as possible. It's typically open by about, what, 5.30 or 6 in the morning. Um, we have to get it right. So it's different every single day. Um, you'll have to pay attention to that. We will post those on a daily basis. So I won't make you any guarantees on when that's going to be. Um, we just we just can't do that. And for those of you who are new families, Mark Storm, who um, has been answered some of his questions, is one of our two show chairs. Um, so you'll see a lot of him around the show, Hi. just so you know his face. And Amy DeGroote, who you can see on there who's answered some is also my support staff so just so you know we are a couple few of the key people who are at the horse show and randy doc and i'm not sure if he's on um he is the other show chair um so if you run into randy um he's the other show chair um that takes on a lot of this responsibility helps make this show really flow nicely so we'll get into some new well, family we got more questions popping in do you want them now okay. or at the end um, no, we can do them now. Okay, is seating still first come first sit in the Coliseum County banner doesn't necessarily mean that this is the only people allowed to occupy that area. Yep, we're going to talk about county banners yet. Okay, um, if we're camping in a trailer with living quarters, can we select a camping spot and then walk our horses to the horse barn when it's time? We would leave the horses in the trailer until the barn opens. Yes, you can. Um, somebody's asking, where are we posting this info updates? This information? The recording will also probably put on um, the State Horse Show uh, website. I had planned to email the link out to everybody that's uh, a State Fair, um, Horse Show participant. Um, I don't know if we can get the link up fast enough um, with the website. So um, an email will be coming out with the slide and the link to the recording. So if you know somebody who didn't get it, um, shoot it to them or well or forward it to them just in case they get it gets in their spam or something and they don't get it from us directly. Um, be a good neighbor, make sure that your county participants who didn't weren't able to be on tonight, get a copy of this that they can watch. Um, somebody's asking if we know our pleasure show judges. If Mark's still there, do you, Mark, do you have your pleasure show judges? I'm um, sorry, sorry. Um, yes, we do. Um, 
in no particular order or classes they'll be judging. Let's see, out-of-state judge is Pat Smith from Georgia. Um, In-state judges are um, Lita Perrin, Christine Ferrant, Brent, um, Tara Swanson, Teresa Fleener. Um, let's see, let's see, I'm missing a couple others showmanship. We've got, um, uh, golly, Josh, are you, are, you still, are, are you still on board, Josh? Yep, Matthew, Lar Matthew Soderbach and Ginny Larson. Okay. When will the patterns be posted? Um, I don't believe we're going to put, we don't post them. We do make a pattern book available at the show. It should be available when you get there at four o'clock on Thursday. We do not post them online um, simply because it's 4-H and we can't guarantee that everybody would get the pattern at the exact same time. So the fairest way for us to do that is to hand them out. We will give you a booklet with all patterns in it at four o'clock, should be available by four, but roughly that time on Thursday afternoon. And they're available in the um, show office. Correct. Um, does anybody know what size are the stalls in the cattle barn? They want to bring mats. Good question. I'm not sure if they're 10 by 10 or 12 by 12. I think they're all 10 by the, in the cattle barn. I think they're 10 yeah. by 10. 10 by 10. And that's what most of them are in the horse barn. Did you guys hear my answer on the on the pattern book? I don't know if I was on mute. No, nope, we not. heard it. Okay. Somebody's asking, where do you get the banner for the arena with your county name on it? That's a county thing, right? Correct. The banner or or says, where do we get the banner for the arena with our county name on it? That's a county thing if they make them. I think let's just address banners a little bit right now. So it's first come first serve to get the banners up. And in the past, we have had some issues with counties taking other counties banners down and such. Um, we debated really hard, or I should say I debated really hard on whether we were gonna allow banners up. I am gonna allow them this year, but if it becomes an issue that we will end up taking them all down um, because there is not enough of the box stalls or those areas to be able to support every county to have one of those areas. So if you're willing to share with the county, that would be a great way to be friendly and meet new people. Um, those banners up, when you have a banner up, does not mean that is solely for your county. Anyone can still sit there. Those banners really are a place for your county to kind of um, gather together and sit if there's open spots, but if counties, you, you cannot kick people out of spots because they're sitting where your banners are because some of those are the only handicapped accessible areas. Um, so just because your banners up, up there does not mean that other people can't sit there. And please be courteous because there is not enough of those areas for every county to have their banner up. So if you could share and two banners could go up in an area, that would be great. If it becomes an issue, we will ask that all of them come down because we have had that issue in the past. Um, a question about games. Do riders need to wait until the gate is closed to run or as soon as they are all the way in the arena? Mark, do you wanna address it? It says that they need to break stride. Um, so okay. our gate people are instructed to, as soon as that horse comes in to get that, that gate closed, um, so it's really closed quickly after they get in there. They cannot run the gate and they must break stride upon entering into the arena. But generally they can go that's, as long as all, it's clear that they've broken stride. Right, that's all correct. So some of you that maybe have ridden at other places or even down at the Coliseum and Champ Show where um, they set up an area short of the gate and that's where you, you're given the all clear. At this event, you must be in the arena. You have to go through the gate. The gate does not have to be closed. So we ask that you break stride or you circle before you begin your run. And that's the normal kind of 4-H uh, what's in the rule book. So um, they're asking, what does it mean to break stride? That means that if you go, you, I mean, you can, if the only way your horse is going to come in is if you come, you know, loping into the into the coliseum 
you either need to circle before you begin your run or you need to break down to a trot. Get, so you need to break gates. You may not stay at one gate all the way into the arena and then just go right to the first obstacle. You will get called for running the gate. So if you come in at a trot, that's great. Then you're going to go up to a, you know, you're going to circle, you're going to go up the lope, you're, you're going to be fine. Um, if your horse is a little hot and hopping, that's kind of breaking gate. Once you're in, off you go. Um, but, so you just need to be mindful of that. You can't run the gate is really what it is. You need to follow the rule book. Yep. Any other questions? So move forward into some new family information. So some key places you should know, the horse show office is where all official paperwork and show management happens. And that's in the Northwest corner of the Coliseum and you enter from the outside. So kind of kitty corner from the horse barn, you'll see an entrance says horse show office. That's where, where all of everything takes place that's horse show related. The horse barn office is located just inside the main horse building to the right. That's where stalling, herdsmanship issues, all of those kind of things happen. And that, um, Tim Haraldson is our barn super, I would say, who handles all the stalling, all the placement and the herdsmanship pieces and any issues that might happen with questions or things that might ha be handled around stalling and horses. So when we talk about horse show office, it's the one in the Coliseum. Horse barn office is the one in the horse barn. Hauling and unloaded, unloading. Please enter through the Como Avenue gate 14, which is Canfield. Um, due to security this year, some of the other gates may not be open. So please plan on coming in that, that south gate off of Como Avenue. Unload as quickly as possible to keep the process moving. We will have a lot of people coming in. Um, don't block roads and be respectful to those who are trying to get in and out. So as you can see the arrow on the bottom, this is a map, that bottom row across there is the Southern Avenue, Como Avenue and gate 14 you'll see is at the far um, west side of the fairgrounds. And as you come in to that lot, if you go straight ahead, you'll see where it says Mighty Midway, that is all camping area. As you come in off of Como on 14 to the left, that green area, the first one third of it, there's two gates that actually go into that lot to the left. The first gate from there to the south is all um, non-electric camping or empty trailers and cars can park in there. The south or the northern two thirds of that lot is electrical spots. So don't come in there on the north part of that lot and drop your empty trailers because someone will make you move them again. So make sure that you know where you're going. <clears throat> and as you come in that Canfield gate, if you take the first right on that road, That'll take you right up to between the horse barn and the cattle barn for unloading. So questions on entry and unloading and loading. Things to know so about when you say, Sorry, so when you say that you're, if you go back to the previous slide, when you unload, you're saying you take the trailers with the horses all the way up to the horse barn, right through that, you through sure that can. avenue there? Okay, yep, you and sure then, can. And Come then up you through Judson take, Avenue. Yep. Okay. Okay, thank you. So is there an empty place to park? Is there a place to park the empty trailer for the weekend? Yep, and that's that. If you come in on the gate 14 where you see the circle, if you take the first left, um, that south third of that lot will all be for empty trailers. And then empty trailers can also be left out in the midway lot as long as it's not an electrical spot. But horse trailers, even if they're brand new, cannot be parked on tar. They have to be parked on a grass, gravel, or dirt area. The Department of Health has rules against any stock trailer or horse trailer being parked on tar on the state fairgrounds. So don't park that because someone will tag it and tell you you need to move it. Gretchen, did you have a question? You raised your hand. Yes, I just wanted to clarify back to the map. Um, yep. when you come in on gate 14 and head towards the, uh, camping slash mighty midway, um, is it, uh, is everything going to be a one way? 
is it going to be like you go around, jump on Liggett, head south, turn right on Judson to unload, or is it going to be coming from both directions? Probably coming from both directions. Okay, thank you. We hope that most people will come in Canfield, turn right on Judson, and then either left on Liggett, or you can even go left between Compere and the horse barn. Right. And then come out through the back side of that and back out to drop a trailer. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Hey, Renee, can a vehicle save a camping spot for a trailer with living quarters? Well, if you, so we say there's no saving spots. However, if you have, I'm just going to be honest, if you have your electrical permit in that car, I don't know if you're sleeping in that or not sleeping in that. Make sense? Okay, so things to know, kids can get in the barn at noon to start decorating or moving tack and stuff in. Horses cannot be in the barn until 4 p.m. And they can't be unloaded in the camping area, et cetera. So please plan accordingly. If it's not super hot out, you can leave them in the trailer, that's fine. But they can't just be tied outside or in the camping area. Um, check in at the horse barn office inside those main doors for your stall locations. Um, shavings are available there for purchase. They are $6 um, for the big bag of shavings. Um, you can purchase those at um, the horse barn office and they'll usually for that first check-in on Thursday, they have extra people there selling shavings so it works faster. And they usually have them in pallets right there for you so that you don't have to walk down to the forage building or anything else. They're right there for you to grab and go after you pay for them. Um, if you're arriving after 9 p.m. on Thursday, it's best if you arrange for someone you know um, to put shavings or purchase those shavings for you in, and put them in your stall. Because if that office closes and you get here after that, you will have no access to those shavings till the next day. Um, so either plan to be there early enough or um, in an emergency, we might be able to get you shavings. But if you're not gonna be there till later on Thursday, have someone else, send money with them, have them purchase the shavings you need to have them sitting in your stall so that they're ready for you when you get there. Cause it can't guarantee how late on Thursday night that that office is gonna be open. Renee, can I circle okay. back to something for a second? Sure can. Uh, I'd like to circle back to the, um, the entering the gate and, and in the game classes coming in, Meg pointed out to me that our rule book does say that the, you cannot begin your run. The gate needs to be closed before you cross the timeline, the starting line. So. Um, as an exhibitor, when you come in, if you're doing all the right things and, and you're not running the gate and you're checking and changing your gate, that's on us. We'll get the gate closed before you cross the line. I don't expect you to have to look back and make sure that that gate's shut um, because somebody is you know, not doing their job back there. But that is the rule. So um, let's keep that in mind, please. That's it. Thank you. And they will make sure that you have the horse slowed and under control before that gate is opened again for you to leave the arena as well. Going back to the gate question, I got another question in here. Back to running the gate. Can we stand by the gate and once it's closed, take off? Sure. Yes. I mean, from the inside, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Renee, are there written directions somewhere for entering the fairgrounds and where to unload and park an empty trailer for, for the weekend? If you applied for camping, you'll get information with a map that shows where the camping areas are in a, in a digital um, map. Um, if you haven't applied for camping, you don't get necessarily get that, that map, but you can pull up the same map that we had. It's on the State Fair's website. And if you don't know, if you, if you email me or give me a call, I can and send you that map too. So I've got it on my computer. Did we have to apply for anything special if we wanted to just drop our trailer though for the weekend or nope. is, oh, okay. I just wanna make sure nope. thanks. Nope. Um, just some things to know, no bicycles are allowed or scooters, skateboards, no dogs in the building. In the buildings, those are state fair rules as well. Um, and we don't allow those either. 
county packets are available um, in the horse barn. And I believe those, Meg, those are available by 6 p.m. or around 6 p.m. or as close to 6 p.m. as we can. And that county packet, we ask that whoever your county contact is, your adult, they pick that packet up. And what that has is your program books. It has all of your exhibitor numbers all in your one county packet. And we ask that that county contact or that adult um, distributes that information to the kids that they need to know. It will also have um, your volunteer uh, assignments in there too, I believe, and those kind of things. And I believe, Meg, it's 6 p.m., correct? That's correct. And there's a table that we set up inside the main doors of the horse barn, so you'll see it. Um, and get in line, then we have them sign off when that's picked up and who picked it up. Um, as Mark mentioned earlier, if you have a conflict with a class and an oppor an opportunity, check with the tunnel as soon as possible and whoever. So if it's between hippology or it's horse judging in one of your events, make sure you check in with both of those areas. So the tunnel to let them know, but also with like hippology, the, the co-chairs of that to let them know and between the two and their communicate on the radios, they will make sure that you have that opportunity to do both. Renee, a couple of people have their hands raised, Gretchen. You, uh, you stated no dogs in the building, which is correct. However, service dogs are still allowed, correct? They are. Um, okay. Just wanted to make sure. sure that they truly are service dogs and not someone's dog um, that is just there with them. Right. But I just, I mean, per, yeah. you know, state fair is fine with service dogs. Correct. Well, another hand up is Kelly. If we're bringing horses in on Saturday for drill team, where do we park our trailer then? You can park them in any area that's not blacktop and is not an electrical spot. And by, you said by then, most of the electrical spots will be full. So there is area right below the swine barn that is mostly just um, area to drop a trailer or again in that lot right to the left as you come in gate 14, there'll be area on that south end to drop trailers and unload for drill team. Thank you. Okay, um, continuing on, be sure you look up your entries in the program book as soon as possible when you arrive. So double check and make sure if something is incorrect, please go to the horse show office in the Coliseum um, for clarification on that. So double check that you are registered for the things that you're supposed to be registered in that show program book. Um, key volunteers in all areas will be wearing a green lanyard with a badge on it that identifies them as a key volunteer. Um, so if you have questions, look for those. That's how you find someone who hopefully knows what's going on in each of those areas. So those volunteers will be wearing those lanyards and badges. Banners, we talked about that a minute. Uh, many counties hang banners up in the Coliseum as a place for the county to gather. This is a first come first serve, but do not take other banners down. And just because your banner is up, we still are making sure that we let you know that anyone can still sit there. Um, we've had problems in the past with that. So if there are problems, then all banners will come down. We just want to make sure that people are kind um, and letting people share because there's not enough of those areas for each banner to be displayed in its own separate section. And not every county has a banner and not every county puts up a banner. So you don't have to have one. So don't feel like your county has to run out and make anything. Some counties do it, some counties don't. Some counties just say they always congregate in section 26, for example, and they just all know that even without their banner, that's where they always sit. So that's fine too. You don't have to have the banner. You can just always gather in the same area. And if your kids know that, if they're watching other ones, then they show up and they know kind of where to look for their own um, county people. Um, things to know about camping. The spaces are first come first serve. They're not assigned spots. So if you get a camping permit, it will have a number on it. That's not your spot. Those numbers are for us and our tracking information. Um, all of the camping spots are first come first serve. Please make sure you stay in the lines and honor our fire lanes um, because if you drop and you're over a line, you'll have to rehook up and move because we are tight, tight, tight in the camping area. 
we have no extra space to have somebody across a line and have to give up a spot. We sell out all of our electrics, if not probably some additional ones. Um, and just know we don't read mark the lines from state fair so they're not super bright so you might have to get out and kind of look and see where those lines are same way with the fire lines that are marked in yellow you cannot be out in the fire lanes um there is an overflow lot for electric and we try and fill that up so we can accommodate as many people in electric as we absolutely can um that lot is north of that midway or the mighty midway lot um it's not super far away it does have electric um, so if you get an overflow lot, if you get there that day, someone in the camping people will direct you up to where that midway lot is. Um, again, as a reminder too, we looked at the map as you enter gate 14, the lot to the left, the far two thirds is electrical camping and the south one third is parking or empty trailers. Um, please be mindful of your space park in, in the lines there too. If you're dropping trailers, make sure you got them backed up as far as you can. Um, and you may have to unhook. Do not park in an electrical space if you don't have an electrical permit because you will be asked to move. Um, like I said, the number on the permit is for us. There are no assigned spots. The permit entitles you to electric, not water and sewer. There are some spots that have water and sewer, but not all of them. Um, and like I said, it's first come first serve. So when we offer the electric permit, it really just makes sure, we'll make sure that you get an electric hookup. And that's first come, first serve. Renee, someone's asking about slide outs. Yep, slide outs are allowed. Um, but if you have to be over farther, um, you know, to make sure that your slide out stays within the lines, please try and do that. Um, we generally say that no awnings out. Um, but if your neighbors, if you're with somebody in your county and they don't mind your awning out, we don't either. But it can't go out if, if you have if you're gonna be across someone else's line and those kind of things. The same with generators. If you're non-electric and you run a generator, um, we don't make you shut your generator off unless it's super loud and there's lots of noise complaints. We don't make you shut it off at 11 o'clock. It can run overnight, but please be respectful of your neighbors. Um, like I said, you must park in the lot. In that lot, as you come in on Como to the left, some of those actually are split. so and some of them are longer. If you drive through and unhook, make sure that you park your trailer in one of the spots where you can hook up. So don't pull partway and unhook and then someone else backs in or you won't get your trailer out as hooked. So you always want them facing out when you unhook so that you can rehook up when it's your time to leave. Um, and it's a tight squeeze down there. We know that we try and give everyone that we can the opportunity to get electrical. That's why it's so tight down there. Um, but stay within your lines again. We will ask you to rehook up and move if you're across the lines. And the map again, as you saw, the over the second arrow on the top represents where the overflow lot is. Um, and there's an entry into it right there through the mighty midway where you can walk in and walk to the horse barn. It's not that far away. It's, it's actually right up there on top of the hill. The midway lot has electrical camping all the way around the outside of that. Um, in addition to electrical park camping in as you come in Como off to the left, if you've applied for electrical camping, you will get a map that designates where all the electrical sites are. Um, and if you need help when you pull in, um, I believe Joe Costick's number or my number is on your electrical stuff. Give us a call if you're not sure where to go or how to park or if you're scared about backing your trailer and someone will get you in um, to the spot that you need to get in. Renee, do they have to unhook? Most of the time you will, not always. It depends on the spot that you get. It all depends on where you fit. You may be asked to unhook. Sometimes you can leave it hooked up, depends. So like on the outside of the midway lots, if you can back in and your truck is behind the fire line and you're in your space, you don't have to unhook. So it depends on where your spot is, if you fit with being hooked up or not fit. Do you know, um, does anyone sell portable water during the weekend? For campers? They don't, um, you're gonna need to come with your tanks full. 
um, use it sparingly. You know, if you happen to run out, you might be able to someone on an end that does have water, you might be able to connect just to refill your tanks and that, um, but no guarantee. So come prepared, come with your tanks full of water. And to be honest with you, it's been probably five years ago, but everyone who was in this one row who had all um, water and sewer in that specific row, a water line broke in there. So they had 10 minutes to fill their tanks to the best of their ability and all the water was shut off in that area anyway. So we never for sure, you can never guarantee you're gonna have water access even if you get one of those spots. So come prepare. Renee, this is Lorraine. Can I mention something? Sure. I noticed the last time in 2019 we were there, people were parking on the roads especially like kind of behind the sheep farm where we were at, they were actually parking directly on the road. So just make mindful of not to park on the road, even if it's the last place to park, you gotta find somewhere else to park. Yep, and the area directly behind or to the north of the horse barn, um, there is lots of car parking in that area, but please be respectful. Don't double park and, and block people in and keep your rows as straight as possible. But right behind to the north of the horse barn is the whole north part of the midway lot that doesn't have, I'm sorry, the east part of the midway lot does not have electrical camping in it. Tons of open car parking. Please also monitor because they do change a lot of their signs on the roads down there. We don't allow parking in front of the Coliseum. We don't allow parking in front of the horse barn. We don't allow parking in front of the cattle barn. Um, so watch those areas as well. Um, just things to know, all rules must be followed at all times, including dress and shoes and helmets when riding and are being around horses. Um, do not ride horses outside of the area where the horse show is taking place. Like I said earlier, not up around the fairgrounds of those areas. Um, no horse trailers can park on TAR, Minnesota Board of Animal or Board of Health rule. Um, be early for all of your classes and check in with the announcer in the tunnel because as we said, they go in order. And if you're not there, you miss it. We, there's nothing we can do about that. So make sure that you are early for your classes and check in with the announcer in the tunnel when you arrive so we know you're there. Classes are run in number order. If you miss your class or order, then you don't run. Um, showmanship has two grades going on in the call. I'm sorry, now I think it's actually at Compier now um, at the same time. So make sure you know that uh, which classes are going on because they do split the arena there and do showmanship two groups at a time. So know which end your class is on um, and know which end you need to check in at for showmanship. That's about the only one that, that we run two classes at the same time. Things to know, um, remember almost everyone there is volunteers, please be kind. Um, what to do if you have a concern or a problem, go to the horse show office and they will guide you to the appropriate person to talk to. Um, all exhibitors will receive a participation pin and unfortunately, there are no Fleet Farm shirts this year. Um, they didn't provide those to State Fair or any of our opportunities or events this year. So that's a little disappointing and we're sorry about that, but it's unfortunate. And to receive your exhibitor pin, you just need to go to the horse show office and they'll have a list of exhibitors and they check you off when you've gotten your pin. Most of all, what we want you to do is have fun, enjoy your trip, cheer on your team and make great memories. And always, when in doubt, ask questions. Um, someone will be able to answer your question. If you find someone with that badge on or go to the horse show office or the barn office, one of them will be able to get your questions ans answered. Um, I know this is a lot of information. And as you start to think through it or process it between now and state horse show, more questions might come up. Please feel free uh, to shoot me or Amy a message. We'd be happy to try and answer those questions for you. We want this to be as least stressful as possible for you. But most of all, we want you to have fun, enjoy the trip and the opportunity that you have. And we are happy to be back as um, a state horse show event. Any other questions? Ran, or I mean, Renee. Yes. Someone asked about rules about the types of bits that are allowed. So the rules, they should be identified in the rule book under each discipline, what's allowed and what's not allowed. If you have something that's unique or you don't think it fits in to the, the specifics that are in the rule book. So under 
Your pleasure classes, there are specifics on types of bits you can use. Under game classes, it talks about the equipment that's um, appropriate for games classes, the equipment that's appropriate, appropriate for English pleasure, for Western pleasure and those things. If something that you have is questionable, um, reach out, ask that question, get approval or disapproval prior to the event because we, we don't want a kid to have a bad experience having something that's not approved. Um, and because we didn't ask the questions ahead of time to find that out. Any other questions? If not, my contact information, my email and my phone number are up on the screen. Please reach out if you have questions. We want to ease your um, uncertainties or levels or what questions you might have as things come up or you think about them. We want you to have um, an enjoyable trip. It's not as stressful as you think. Um, when you get there, kind of just follow along, ask the questions you need to ask. It kind of just all falls into place um, and have an enjoyable show. We are still planning to live stream um, our state horse show. So we will send that link out when we have them and we will also be posting them. And that's a great way to follow along of where they're at in classes. So you can kind of keep track of when you should start getting ready or when you might need to start heading up up there. Um, no, there's a little delay in it and don't wait till the last minute, but it's a good way to kind of keep track of where things are at. Right now, um, due to a shortage with the live stream, we don't know if we are going to have coverage at Compere yet, but for sure the Coliseum will be covered. But we are working on trying to alleviate that, working with the, um, the video company to potentially find them some extra workers to, to make that happen. Renee, a couple questions are coming in. I answered some. Um, a lot of the, the bit questions and the spur questions are all in the horse show rule book. Um, also, someone's asking if they, uh, where did it go? If they're just sleeping in their tack room of their trailer, do we need a permit? Where do we park? They, you should have a non-electrical permit um, if you're staying in your trailer at all. Um, if you don't have one of those or don't didn't apply for one of those, um, you can uh, come to the horse show office when you get there and they can direct you to find Joe and he can give you one of those permits. Um, and the reason that we charge, a couple of reasons we charge both for electrical and non-electrical. Um, the non-electrical, we still have to pay for the lots that, that house all of those campers. So that covers some of those fees. It also covers for the porta potty fees that are out there. Um, and that's one of the fees that significantly, significantly went up for us this year. Um, along other ones, it also helps to pay for the shower facilities and all of those kind of things. So that's part of the reason that we have to charge for non-electrical camping as well as electrical camping. Do you know how big the bags of shavings are? They're the standard ones, the same size you buy. Um, I don't know what the weight is. They're the standard ones that you would buy at any farm supply. So just clarify there's no charge to just pack, park the empty trailer. Correct. No charge to park an empty trailer. As long as it's parked in, not, you know, in a place that's designated for empty trailers or that it's not an electrical spot. Any other questions I can answer for anyone? Someone's, ask, reach out. someone's asking for the link for um, where the um, camping's going to be. I'm going to put it on in the chat. It should be on the State Horse Show page, website page. Yep. Are there separate classes for the ponies? There's, Renee, I'll let you answer There's that. There's two pony classes. Um, pony classes are in, not in the equitation classes, but pony, um, pony Western pleasure and pony English pleasure are two pony classes that we offer. There are specific times that will be identified in the show program of when ponies need to be measured. So they need to appear there and get measured at those times, um, time frames to be eligible to ride in those pony classes. So make sure you look on your schedule. If you have a pony or you're in pony classes that you get measured at the at one of those specific times the rule on um, the schedule says 12 noon uh, across from the horse barn 
on Saturday. Um, somebody's wanting to know if, um, does the arena split for any games? No. Nope, the arena does not split for games. It's one class at a time and they're one rider at a time for games. If a horse won't go into the gate, can you get let in? Yes. We have someone down in the tunnel that assists with that. He's really good with horses. So we have that person as well as a parent can also help um, lead that horse in. A parent <laughs> cannot, however, stay in the arena um, while that ride is happening. They have to come immediately back out when those gates are shut. We don't allow anyone to stand in the arena. Any other questions? We would also love for those of you who are new after the state horse show, if there are things that would have been helpful for you to know um, that we didn't cover in this, if you let us know, because then we can make this better and better each year and answer those questions that people would have, should have liked to have known that would have helped make their experience better. We're always looking to try and make everyone's experience a little easier. So if things come up and, and man, I wish I would have known that or that have been helpful. If after the show, if you let us know that, we'd be definitely be happy to add that into our presentation. Um, seeing no other questions, I thank you again for your time tonight. Again, this was recorded. Please share what you've learned with other people in your county that may not have been able to attend or at least give them the webinar so that they can um, watch this as well so that we can share that information and make everyone's experience a positive one. And I look forward to seeing all of you at State Horse Show this year. Thanks very much, everybody. Thanks, Renee.